every day you're rubbing shoulders with uh, students and you say that they give you hope. What are the challenges uh, that, our, that they have that our generation uh, didn't have? And what do they know that our generation didn't know? Or doesn't know. Or do, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Michael, one is the very fact of being young. We were all young once. The world stretched way into the future. We were optimistic. We believed we could do anything. We could change the world. So one is that factor. When you're young, you have that certain optimism and hope. And that is very American. You know, America is a country which is very, very impressive because it believes in progress, in the future, in optimism. If you lose that, which you do eventually as you grow older, you've lost something which is essential for, as far as American identity is concerned, being American. Secondly, at least my students, they're there to learn. I'm teaching Islam, it's a very popular subject, so I always have a full class, in fact, oversubscribed every year. And most of my students are not Muslim. They may be 5%, 10%, that's it. Mostly are Jewish, mostly are Christian, and they really want to understand, they really want to know. And my approach is very broad-based. So I try to explain Islam in relationship to its history, foundation, theology, but also how it relates to Judaism, to Christianity, so that they have a full understanding of Islam in the context of the world we are living in. And finally, I find a lot of the students, the good ones, who are studying and reading, they are very sharp, very sharp. I'll give you an example of one of my honor students, Frankie Martin, who you met. Uh, I was traveling for the first time with my team. We were going towards India. So we were, we were in the Middle East, we were going to Pakistan, then we'd go to India. So I began to tell my team, I said, look guys, there was a famous English author, his name was E.M. Foster. He wrote a famous book called A Passage to India, which has been made into films. Now, the significance of this book, and Frankie dug into his <laughs> backpack and pulled out a copy of A Passage a to passage India. India. And I was so it. pleased with that, I was so pleased. I said, my God, you forget knowing about him, you're carrying his book, because I, I was a great admirer of E.M. Foster. And a little tidbit, Michael, for your viewers, I actually met him. So just before he died uh, in Cambridge, he lived in uh, King's College in Cambridge. I just went up to his room, knocked on the door, and uh, he came out. He was a little bit uh, lost at that time. and he, you know, he's, uh, So I said, you know, I've come here to really compliment you on a book you wrote uh, 50, 40 years ago. But also the character you wrote of Dr. Aziz, one of the most brilliant portrayals of, of, uh, of an Indian Muslim. And he was a bit puzzled. He said, who's Dr. Aziz? You know, he's really <laughs> yeah. had reached that stage. And then he asked me, he said, do you know Sir Ras Masood or their children, his children or grandchildren? And I was a bit puzzled because that was in fact uh, someone related to me. So yes, uh, Sir Ras Masood was um, uh, his great grandson and my uh, mother, his mother, um, the mother of his mother and my mother, first cousins. So we, we have two connections to Sir, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan. So I was very pleased with that. And of course, it's one of my favorite books. So that illustrates that even these youngsters with all the pressures of the world on them and social media and uh, tweets and films and um, um, the videos that are exposed, to the, that they are exposed to, they're still reading and they're still thinking and appreciating literature. And that's why you have hope for the future. Yes. And they're not cynical. They haven't become cynical. They haven't started going pessimistic. I think politics in America are so divided and that these parties are just opposing each other almost irrationally. And that has made them very cynical, very critical of each other, and is brittle and self-destructive. Politics, if it becomes so self-destructive, as Socrates was the first man to write, you know, Socrates was a great critic of democracy. So both things they say, invented by the Greeks, philosophy and democracy. Socrates, a great philosopher, was a great critic of democracy, precisely for this reason. Mm -hmm.